Edible Plants, Part 2. Those are the ending times. The edible parts of Sea Rocket are the flowers, leaves, roots, seed pods, and stem. The plants are usually found on the shore above the high tide line. Young leaves should be cooked for about 10 minutes in hot water. Older leaves probably need to uh, change the water. They are a bit they are a bit bitter. There are two main varieties, American and European. The American have much smaller flowers. Red maids are members of the purslane family. Both the leaves and the seeds are edible. The seeds are very small and very fiddly to work with. The plants do have a small amount of oxalic acid. Gives them a sour taste. These plants were eaten by many Native Americans. It goes all the way down to the Andes and up into uh, British Columbia. These plants are very good tasting and very nutritious. Probably don't want to eat a whole lot of it because of the oxalic acid though. Mariposa lilies are good to eat but their bulbs are rather small and they can be hard to dig out. The flowers are also very beautiful so probably shouldn't eat them unless it was an emergency. The flowers, leaves, roots, and seed are all edible. You can eat the bulb raw or cooked. There are many different species and it varies quite widely in how they look. One thing they have that most other plants don't is they have hair-like projections on their flowers. Fairy slippers are a protected plant in many places. They are orchids and uh, they're very hard to grow. They have a symbiotic relationship with fungus and it's, uh, it takes several years for them to mature. It probably should only be gathered as an emergency and uh, this was mainly just for informational purposes. I wouldn't recommend eating them. They're too beautiful to eat. The bolts were eaten by Native Americans, usually boiled. They are reported to have a rich butter-like quality. Camas is a very important food source for many Native Americans. The roots are edible, but you have to be careful. They look a lot like death camas. One of the main carbohydrates is inulin. It requires long cooking times to release the sugar. When they're cooked in, in cooking pits, they often turn black. That's why it's sometimes called black camas. The roots could be up to 30% fructose if you cook it for long enough. The Native Americans also used to clean the death camas out and uh, they would burn the fields to get rid of other competing plants. It was a very important food source for them. One of the main ways it was cooked was they'd build a big fire, heat up some rocks, and then they would bury the, the camas in a pit for up to two days. The bulbs are quite large. Some of them are two inches across. Shepherd's purse have been eaten for thousands of years. It's one of the earliest plants in the springtime. It is a member of the mustard family. The entire plant is edible. Usually it's used as a pot herb. The seeds are also very high in fat. The plants get bitter as they get older and they taste somewhat peppery. Shepherd's purse is grown commercially in China. It is very widespread as, and it grows as a weed. The roots have been used as a substitute for ginger. Some people are sensitive to the seeds and it can cause blistering in some people. Milkmaids are a regional variety of bittercress found on the west coast of the United States. They are also called California toothwort. They are members of the mustard family. They are reported to have a very strong mustard-like flavor. The root is edible and it tastes something like a radish. It usually grows on shady slopes. The plants usually only grow about a foot tall. Bittercresses are members of the mustard family. They are very widespread and common. They are often considered a noxious weed. They usually have a very distinct mustardy flavor. The variety around here has a very strong mustard flavor. It wasn't really bitter though. The leaves and flowers are both edible, raw or cooked. The strong flavor makes it usually used mainly as a garnish or adding it to other vegetables. All parts of a thistle are edible. The main part that is eaten is the stems which, you, which are peeled. The seeds are edible and have a lot of oil. In the springtime the uh, young plants can be eaten whole, boiled as a pot herb. The flower heads are eaten like you would an artichoke. They're very spiny so they obviously need to be cooked. They're also very bitter so they should be soaked overnight in cold water before being boiled. Caraway has edible roots and seeds. The seeds are used as a spice. 
You need to be careful though in your identification. The plant strongly resembles hemlock. The plant is similar in appearance to a carrot plant. It is often used as a spice in making rye bread. The seeds are more properly called fruits. Tea is also made from the seeds and it is used as a fragrance. Bush chenquapin is a member of the beech family. They are usually a small inconspicuous shrub-like plant. The nuts are very sweet tasting. There is a dense layer of golden scales on the underside of the leaves. The nuts take 12 to 16 months to mature. Some chinquapin grow quite tall. They're up to uh, 40 meters tall. Indian paintbrush are a very widespread and common plant. The flowers are edible. You need to be careful eating them though. If you eat too much of them, they tend to accumulate selenium. They are semi-parasitic plants on the roots of grasses. If you're in a very arid, dry area, you probably shouldn't eat very much of it at all because uh, there's more likely to be selenium in that sort of environment. In places with higher rainfall, selenium just washes away. Celtis, or hackberry, is a genus of about 60 or 70 species of deciduous trees. They are very widespread in the northern hemisphere. The fruit is very sweet. It has been traditionally used as an important food source by many Native American tribes. The fruit is rather small and hard to get to, so it's not usually eaten by people. It is said to taste like a date. There is a single large seed inside the fruit. The flowers of red bud are edible. They are small trees. They usually only grow about 20 feet tall. The flowers are pea-like, and the plant grows pods like a pea, and the pods persist through the winter. The young pods of the plant are also edible. Twigs of the plant were used to weave baskets. The flowers usually emerge well before the leaves. Like other legumes, the seeds are quite high in protein. The red fruit of saguaros ripen in June. The fruits are very sweet and very good eating. The plants don't produce fruit until they're about 40 years old. They are pollinated by bats. The fruits are very high up. Native Americans used the uh, ribs of fallen saguaros to knock the fruit down. Greenleaf Five Eyes are a member of the nightshade family. I would recommend not eating them unless you are very, very careful. They are also reported to, to be not very good eating. The fruit is enclosed by the flower until it gets ripe. They look rather like tomatillos, which is a food I see here often in the uh, Mexican markets. Goosefoot is a very large family of plants. They are members of the amaranth family. Their main uses are as seeds or as grains. Some species of goosefoot aren't very good eating. They contain a lot of saponins. That's especially hard on, if, on fish, and some native tribes use them to uh, catch fish. The saponins would dissolve in the water and it would stun the fish. Some also contain oxalic acid. Some members of the family, like lamb's quarters, are quite good. They're as good as spinach. They're very easy to collect and very common. Pipsisawa has long been used by the Native Americans. It can either be brewed into a tea or the leaves eaten raw. An extract of the leaves is used as a flavor in candy and soft drinks. It is used as a flavoring in root beer. It's also used as a flavoring for certain alcoholic beverages in Mexico. Pipsisawa is used as a disinfectant because it contains many hydroquinones. The whole plant is antibacterial. The root of soap plant can be eaten after it's cooked. Their habitat is coastal bluffs, grasslands, chaparral, and oak woodlands. The saponins in the plant are also very toxic to fish and the Native Americans used to put it in the water to stun fish. A thick juice that was obtained from cooking was used as glue. When broken, a leaf will exude a green sap. The plant takes about 10 years to mature, so you probably don't want to eat too many of them. Chicory is often cultivated for its leaves. They are quite bitter. They can be made less bitter by placing a bucket or something over it so it excludes the light. It is more commonly known as endive. The roots have been often baked and used as a coffee substitute. 
They are also quite edible. The roots are high in inulin. It's a very complex carbohydrate. 